kids, today I've got another exciting animal story for you. Let's get reading. Hey kids, our exciting story for today is called Suro and Huchi the Honey Badger. Say again with me kids, Suro and Huchi the Honey Badger. Okay, kids, let's start our story. There is a country found in the continent called Africa. This country is called Angola. Say it with me, kids. Angola. In Angola, there is an animal which loves honey more than many others. This is called a honey badger. A honey badger. In a particular Angolan jungle, there was one honey badger called Huchi. Huchi was the best honey collector in the jungle, kids. Her honey was always smooth and the sweetest. Because of this, many animals who did not know how to harvest honey always wanted Huchi's honey. Huchi knew this very well, kids. And so, if anyone wanted to have some of her honey, Huchi would say, You all know that my sweet delicious honey is the best in the whole of this jungle. Therefore, if you want some of it, you have to give me some of the best of whatever you have. Now kids, because the honey was sweet, and honey is also a very good natural African medicine, the animals found themselves bringing their best belongings to Wichi to get some honey. Others brought food like crops and plants and others brought items like nice stones and feather skids. Huchi ended up with a lot of nice things, some of which she did not use herself. The animals did not mind, except for our favorite little naughty friend, Suro the rabbit. Suro had a problem, kids. He did not like to work. He was very lazy. And so, Suro did not have much things to exchange with other animals in order to get nice things. Despite this, Suro still wanted nice things. Suro especially wanted to have some of Huchi's honey. Every animal was always saying, If you haven't tried Huchi's honey, you haven't lived. Mm. Suro tried to go to his animal friends to ask for some, but all of them said no. They said to Suro, We all traded with Huchi and gave up some of our best things. You must do your own trade and get your own sweet delicious honey. Sura did not like this at all, kids, but he still wanted some of that honey. Hmm. Then one day, he saw Huchi coming from harvesting some honey. Hmm. Man, I really wish I could have some of that sweet delicious honey, he thought to himself. Suddenly, Tsuro thought of a plan that would help him get some honey. Hmm. He ran into the forest, found some ashes, and he found some dirt as well, then covered his chin, his head, and the top of his nose. His face looked like an old rabbit now, kids. 
that he found a long stick to use as a walking stick. Now, everyone knows that rabbits are very fast. And so, Zuru ran and hopped and ran and hopped and ran and hopped away ahead of Hoochie. Then he waited by the side of the road, kids. When he saw Hoochie coming his way, Zuru bent his back and started shaking like an old rabbit. He even started walking slowly with the stick like he was sick, kids. When Hoochie was getting closer, Zuru began to cough. <coughs> he did not really have a cough, kids, but he wanted Hoochie to believe that he was a sick old rabbit. <coughs> he went on. When Hoochie was near, she saw what looked to be an old rabbit struggling to walk with a stick. And she saw that the old rabbit was coughing very badly. <coughs> well, she felt very bad for the poor old rabbit. Like what a good African would do, she rushed by his side to help. Good afternoon, Uncle Rabbit, she greeted. Zuru was secretly happy that his plan was working, kids. Hoochie actually believed that Zuru was an old rabbit. Hmm. Zuru then changed his voice to make it sound old and shaky. <laughs> Hello, young Miss Honey Badger. Oh, thank you for stopping to, to, to help me and my family. <laughs> Zuro cried and coughed, kids. Your family? Hoochie asked as she looked around to see where this family was. She did not see anyone, kids. <coughs> Zuro coughed. Yes, he said. My family. <coughs> they are all sick like me. We have this terrible cough, which has made it difficult for us to continue with our journey together. <laughs> I am trying to rush ahead to find help for them, but this cough is making it very hard. <laughs> now, kids. Everyone in Africa knows that one of the best medicines for a cough is honey. This is why Zuru was pretending to be sick with a cough. When Wuchi heard what Zuru had said, she felt sorry for him. Hmm. I'm very sorry to hear about this, Uncle Rabbit, she said. A cough is a very nasty illness. Well, you are in luck because I happen to have the best medicine for coughs. I have honey, but not just any honey, the best honey in all the jungle. Sit down here and I will give you some. Zuru was very happy to hear these kids. His plan was working. And so he sat down and Hoochie gave him a lot of honey to eat and to keep for later as well. Zuru ate the honey kids. Even licked his fingers. The honey was so delicious. It even made his ears stand up. Hoochie even gave him some water. When he was done, he said to Hoochie, My kind daughter, what about my family? They must be stuck in the road behind. Could you please see to them for me? I am just an old rabbit and I am very tired. Hoochie felt sorry for Tsuro. 
Of course, Uncle Rabbit. You stay here and I will run to your family and give them this honey as well. With that, kids, which he started walking along the road to look for the family that Tsuro had talked about. As soon as she left, Tsuro stood up and danced. Yippee! I am so clever. I am so clever. I am so very, 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 very clever, he said. Then he went into the bush and ran and ran and ran fast. He ran, kids, until he was a little ahead of Hoochie. Then he went to the side of the road. This time, he removed the ash and dirt, fake beard, and took some green powder from some plants. He then smeared it all over his body. He looked like a green rabbit now, kids. Then he waited. When he saw Huchi coming, Suro started to cough again. <coughs> Huchi ran to the rabbit. Hi there, little rabbit. I saw your grandfather just back there, Huchi said. He told me about the cough in your family. Here. Have some honey. Huchi gave Tsuro the sweet, delicious honey again, kids. It was so delicious. Again, Tsuro licked his fingers. <coughs> Tsuro gave him some water and some more honey to keep for the cough. There you go, little rabbit, she said. You will be okay soon. If you walk fast, you will see your grandfather down the road. To mm. <coughs> said, he was secretly happy. He waited until Wuchi had walked away and stood up and ran again ahead of her, just like he had done before kids. When he was way ahead, he got out of the forest and dusted off the green powder from his fur. Then he put a flower above his ear and he waited again. Gucci, just like the last time kids, arrived where Tsuro was. Hello, Mrs. Tsuro, she said. My name is Huchi. I am here to help. Tsuro made a pretend cough and tried to speak with a light and high voice to sound like a female rabbit. <coughs> he coughed. Oh, my sweet lady, Tsuro said. My family and I have struggled with this cough. Huchi felt pity, kids, and again shared her honey with the rabbit. However, she noticed some green powder behind the rabbit's ear. Hmm. Huchi did not say anything, kids. She just gave the rabbit some extra honey, then left the rabbit there to look for the daughter rabbit. Hmm. Tsuro danced kids and ran again ahead in front of Wuchi in the bushes and threw the flower away. He quickly made a grass bracelet and put it on his hand. Then he waited again in the road. His belly was full of honey kids, but he was enjoying tricking Wuchi so much that he did not want to stop. Hmm. He started coughing again when he saw Huchi. <coughs> As Huchi was giving his rabbit some honey, she looked behind his ear and saw the same green powder kids. Hmm. Huchi was confused. Had she been giving her honey to the same rabbit all along? Or did the whole rabbit family have the same green powder? 
Hoochie wasn't sure, kids. She decided to do a test. She took a drop of honey and put it right in the middle of the green powder behind the rabbit's ear while the rabbit was busy eating the honey. Hmm. So he did not even feel a thing, kids. When Hoochie left the rabbit, Zuru ran again ahead in the bushes and threw away the grass bracelet. He was happy because he could still pretend to be a father rabbit and uncle rabbit and the grandmother rabbit. He really wanted to finish all of Wuchi's honey kids to really show how clever he was. And so, Zuru found another plant with a black color and rubbed it on his left arm. Then he waited in the road. When he saw Wichi coming, he started to cough again. <coughs> when Wichi arrived, she saw a rabbit with the same height as the others, but with a black eye. Hello, Uncle Tsuro, she greeted. Hello, Lady Honey Badger. <coughs> Zuro replied. As he coughed, kids, Zuro bent his little head and his ear bent forwards, kids. Which he saw the green powder again and the drop of honey she had put right in the middle. Oh. That is when Wuchi realized that this was the same rabbit who was just pretending to be a grandfather, a grandson, a mother, a daughter, and now an uncle rabbit. She had been tricked. Huh? And worse still, this little rabbit was still tricking her. Huh? Well, she wanted to say something right away. But then she decided to teach this rabbit a lesson. Oh, Uncle Rabbit, she said, I think I know how I can help you and your family once and for all. I will take you to my secret place where I hide all of the best, most sweet, delicious honey I make. That honey will surely heal you, but I have to blindfold you because it's a secret. Zoro was a happy kid to hear this. He could not believe that he was so clever that he was going to be given the best honey ever. <gasps> please, please tie me up, Zoro begged. Blindfold me so that I can go with you. Hmm. Which he then blindfolded Suro with some leaves and tree bark kids. They walked for long with Suro asking, Are we there yet? He asked and asked until Huchi finally removed Suro's blindfold kids. Hmm. Suro was expecting to see a lot of golden honey when he opened his eyes. Instead, kids, he found himself standing in the jungle gathering place surrounded by all the animals in the jungle. <gasps> Worse still, there was a very big swarm of bees flying just above his head. All the animals were angry. Then, right in front of his face, came the queen of the bees. Bzzz, bzzz, she said, You naughty little rabbits decided to trick and steal from our friend, Hoochie. Do you know that Hoochie works hard for us in order for us to give her that honey? And you disrespected her work because you are too lazy and too selfish to be fair. That is very wrong. Yay, 
Yes, all the animals agreed. That is very wrong. Now, said the queen bee, because we do not tolerate stealing or tricking and we respect fair trade in this jungle, you must work for Huchi. Apologize to her and all the animals until you have paid her back for all the honey you have eaten. All the animals agreed, but Sura did not like that, kids. But Huchi already has a lot of stuff from trading all that honey, and we are supposed to share, he complained. That is true, the queen bee said, but in this case, we are talking about trade, and that is very different because which he does honest work to get this honey. It is also fair that if someone wants it from her, she has the power to decide whether to share it or to trade it. You do not get to decide for her how and what she can do with what is hers, especially since she has not been selfish or unfair. Sora still did not like these kids. He looked at all the animals that were there and thought that he could outrun them all. He was not going to do any hard work for anyone. Mm -mm -mm. And so, Sora just jumped and started to run away, kids. But before he could go anywhere, he felt a very painful sting on his bum. Ah! So he screamed and stopped, kids. That was when he remembered that bees were small, but they could fly. They were surrounding him. So he felt so terrified that he did not try to run anymore. I'm sorry, he cried. I will not run. I will apologize to Huchi and I will work for her until she says it's okay. And so, Tsuru learned the hard lesson about stealing, playing tricks, and punishment. He did everything until he was set free. The end. Well, kids. We've come to the end of another exciting jungle tale story. Remember to subscribe or ask your parents to subscribe and never miss another story. Bye kids!